Another big concept that, that gets tossed around a little bit that uh, I thought would be useful to raise is the idea of executive presence. Now, maybe, maybe your company talks about this. Uh, in some quarters, it's, it's a bit of an obsession. Oh, she has executive presence. Oh no, she doesn't have executive presence. It's, uh, it's kind of viewed as, as a sort of ineffable thing, right? You either have it or you don't. But there's a think tank in New York called the Center for Talent Innovation. And they decided to set out and study the phenomenon of executive presence. What do people actually mean when they say that? Because if you can reverse engineer it, then that actually means that you can work on it. You can do something about it. Whereas if it is a mysterious, you have it or you don't concept, then what that all too often has meant is that some people are forever locked out of it. And all too often, it means that men are seen to have executive presence and women are not. So they did break it down. They surveyed executives. They, they tried to, to figure out what, what are people talking about um, with this mysterious quality. And they discovered that executive presence fundamentally consists of three things, three categories. The first one and the most important one is gravitas. And basically what we mean by this is that you are someone who is perceived as being cool-headed. You are someone that in a crisis people trust to do the right thing. This is what we look for in our, in our presidents, right? Our elected leaders. We want to we wanna elect someone that you trust when times are tough. That's number one. Number two, perhaps not surprisingly, is communication skills. Can you give a good speech? Can you, uh, in that critical moment, when you need to get the board uh, to back your initiative, when you need to get your team behind your vision, can you communicate it in such a way that they say, oh, this person has vision. I'll, I'll get behind her. If you can do that, you are well on your way to being a strong leader with executive presence. And third and finally, this is, this is actually the least important part. This is only 10%, but it is nonetheless worth mentioning, worth being aware of, is appearance. Um, now, there are two parts of appearance, right? One is, uh, is something that none of us really can control, which is that some people look like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. <laughs> Most of us do not. Um, not surprisingly, as you know, research says that if you do look like Angelina Jolie, everyone wants her to be their leader. <laughs> but the other part of it, which we all can control, is making sure we look neat, that we look professional, that we are uh, you know, as, uh, as sharp and fitted to the uh, context as need be. And, and that's something that actually, um, it can be tricky sometimes. People, uh, particularly, particularly in, the, in the US where everyone's very litigious and very uh, especially worried about things like sexual harassment, um, it, it can be tricky to have honest feedback and honest conversations about whether, you know, what your wardrobe or your appearance looks like, whether it's appropriate, et cetera. So it can be hard sometimes to actually get the honest information you need. So it's something that we all just need to be conscious and aware of.